in um, doing the work of the Lord. Let's go this morning to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to begin reading in verses 3 and 4. We're going to stay with the theme of soldiers today. We're going to talk about being good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you would stand with me if you're able. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 will be our text today. The Bible says there, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier." Good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. God, we thank you, Lord, that we are able to worship, we are able to praise you in spirit and in truth in many different ways, and we're thankful for that. Lord, those that we are participating in and much more would never be enough to give you the glory and the honor that you truly deserve. But we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are, your presence with us today, and your precious word. Speak to our hearts. God, challenge us here today as soldiers of the cross. Lord, we'll be careful to praise you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. I come with a very challenging message today, and that is the point. When you think of soldiers, I, as I begin to look up the different, you may be seated if you're able, uh, the, many, the many needs or many creeds and mottos of uh, the military that uh, they live by and the level of dedication and commitment and honor and courage. You know, it really... When we begin to think of a soldiers' commitment and dedication compared to the, the common citizen, uh, oftentimes it's not nearly the same, of course. Uh, but so the message concerning being a soldier, a good soldier of Jesus Christ, should be one that challenges, um, challenges every heart that would hear. The message today is for every Christian. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, the Bible tells us that there's only one way to God, and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. He offers that. The Bible is very clear, makes it simple. Believe in the gospel and repent. We put all kind of other words and phrases with it to help People understand about what it means to be saved and become a Christian, receiving Christ. But basically, the Bible teaches us to believe the gospel and repent. Both of those are a requirement to be born again. Well, if you're not, you can be before you leave here. We'll have an altar call and and, uh, call on you to receive Christ today if you don't know him as personal Savior. I want to talk for a little while to the children of God. We are a part of the army of God. Did you know that? In this army, we, in this army, this army of God is not a democratic organization, but it is a dictatorship. And it's, I'm not the dictator, but God is the one. He is our commanding officer. He is the one whom we are following, Jesus Christ. We, he, in, uh, but in this army of the Lord, you have not been drafted in, but if you're a part of the army of God, you have volunteered to be a part of the army. But before you surrender to the Lord, you lived your life just any old way that you wanted to live, but once your name was written down in the Lamb's book of life, uh, you don't belong to yourself anymore, right? There's only one who could have saved you. 
There is only one, right, that could pay the price for the salvation of the world. And uh, your salvation cost the Son of God, cost him his blood, his flesh, and his life. Notice with me the scripture details it in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. First Peter 1, 18 and 19, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We are not in a democracy in the kingdom of God. You and I do not get to vote on our actions. We don't get to vote on our lifestyle and even our level of commitment. And you see, in a democracy, you can disagree with other people and you can still be right. But in the military, you don't get a vote. You just have commands. Amen. Well, the, I, I imagine the, the commanding officer, he gives orders and you do them. I, I just, I couldn't imagine it would be like uh, some uh, attempt to serve the Lord nowadays. You know, the commanding officer come along and say, you, I tell you what, we're going to give you a choice. We're going to wake up in the morning, 5 a.m. We're going to go on a little run, just 10 miles. Or you can choose, we'll sleep in till about 9.30 and we'll just go for a nice little walk in the afternoon. Hello? Amen. Not even laughter. Right? But this, this is how some people look at their service for the Lord. But we are in the army of God. We are a military organization called the kingdom of God. And God gives commands according to his divine purpose. We are soldiers of Jesus Christ. We are the army of God. The Bible tells us, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Enduring hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The word of God is filled with scriptures that reveal to you and I this idea that we are in a battle, that we are in an army. The scripture tells us in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The Song of Solomon describes the church as being terrible as an army with banners. Paul writes in Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not a party. This is not a park where we come and bring our kids and allow them to play and everybody have a good time. But this is warfare. We have gotten away from the idea that when we come to the house of God, not only when we're in the house of God, but when we're outside of the church, we have lost the idea that we are in war. We have lost the concept and the mindset of fighting the good fight, that we are in a battle and we go through life so often not thinking about this battle and we walk around defeat. We fail to understand that we are not in a place of amusement, but we come to do battle for the Lord. 
as heaven is reaching out to you and I, when we come together, hell is also reaching, trying to distract, trying to discourage, trying to pull us away from receiving what the Lord would have for us to have. But you see, this is warfare. This is not a park that we come and play in, but it is a battlefield. Church used to be a place where people would come and do battle against spiritual darkness and wickedness. But now most churches are a place of amusement and entertainment. Our own flesh, uh, you and I, we, our own flesh has led us to a place where we are more concerned about did everybody enjoy the service instead of are we concerned about having a move of God. Folks, we do our fighting on our knees in the altars. We do our fighting when we come into the house of God and worship him and give him the praise that he really deserves. He deserves more than what we can give him even when we are giving him our very best. We, we do our fighting when we worship him. We, we will begin to see victory when not only are the cushions on the altar stained with the tears of sinners, but also church members and leadership repenting of God, wanting renewal and wanting revival for ourselves and for our church. What a tragedy when a battlefield becomes a park. There's an old battlefield in Virginia where there was a great battle that took place in the Revolutionary War. And on, on this battlefield, men laid their lives on the line fighting for something that they believed in. But if you go there now, you're going to find that it is a park where families go and have a picnic and where they go and play. You're gonna, when you go there, you'll see swing sets and teeter-totters and slides and beautiful grass all around. But if we're not careful, that's what church will become if we let it. The battlefield will become a park. And in this building, I can just imagine over the years how warriors have paid the price through commitment and through prayer and through holy living. And what were they doing? They were fighting a battle that they believed in. And if we're not careful, we will allow the battlefield to become a place of amusement. It was, sometimes we praise more than we pray. Sometimes we take more than we give. Sometimes we are absent more than we are present. There are some that are present in the building, but they are absent from what God is wanting to do because we spend more time on our telephone than in the Word of God. Lord, make us soldiers again. Make us a people who realize somebody's got to stand up and fight this good fight. Somebody's got to stand up for the word of God. Somebody's got to pray. Somebody's got to seek the Lord on behalf of those who don't know any better. Oh, God, make us soldiers again. America does not need another bomb or another missile. But what America needs is a church that will be get on fire of the Holy Spirit of God, Spirit of God, grab hold of the word of the Lord and stand for battle. Doing what God. Some say, well, the church can only do so much. Friend, there is nothing that can stop a church that walks with God. The Bible tells us in Matthew 16 and 18, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are a military organization. Wherever we go, the kingdom of God is there. You and I, we are the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is inside of us. We are at war and we are soldiers of Jesus Christ. He tells us there in 2 Timothy 2 and 3, Thou therefore, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A lot of gospel we hear today is about cheap grace. We also hear... If you have problems, that means that you're not in the will of God. 
I'm here to tell you that if you don't have any problems, you probably are out of the will of God. Amen. 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 If the devil is leaving you alone, that means you are no threat to him. If you start taking a stand for God, the devil's going to fight. If you make your mind up, you're going to do something for the Lord. The devil's going to fight you. He's going to come against you. He's not just going to lay down and die, but glory to God. You and I are soldiers on the winning side. Can you say amen? Amen. We are, we are living in some dark days, friend. We are living in times of darkness where there is spiritual warfare that's going on that many of us do not even realize it's taking place. Notice with me in Psalms 9 and 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Look around. Look around the world that we are living in today. Hell is everywhere, it seems like. Hell is on the streets. Hell is in our schools. Hell is in our homes. And God is looking for a, still looking for a good few men and women to say, I'm going to push the devil out of the street. I'm going to push the devil out of my home, out of family, out of our relationships. And the devil has no place among the people of God and on God's territory. So we stand for Jesus Christ. The opportunity is revival like never before, I believe, is among us today. We can have it. We can have victory. Why? Not because of, uh, of a number or not because of anything else other than we do our battle, we do our fighting on our knees. The great revivals of history have taken place when the people of God have prayed and called upon the Lord. It's not about in the, the, the talent of a, a minister or the abilities of a minister, but it's about the sovereignty of God. It's about the power of God resting on the people of God again as we seek him with all of our hearts. Look at the time in which we are living in. It matches some of the, the, the great times of history where revival broke out. The great revivals of the past have happened in the darkest times of history. Look at our nation. Wickedness, homosexual agenda, murder, fornication, perversion, lust, all of the rest. Everywhere we look. Surround us. What a time for revival. Don't listen to the message that you're not going to have to fight. There's a message out there, y'all. You don't have to fight. The devil is defeated. Oh, yeah, he is defeated. The devil is a defeated foe. The Lord has done that for us. Amen. But that must be a reality in every generation. You see, I don't have to win the victory. Jesus has already done that. But I do have to enforce the victory. I do have to walk this thing out in which God has done in our lives. If you slumber and if you sleep, the enemy will slip into your life unawares and slowly defeat you. There's three things that will be required of you as a soldier. Three things that's required of you as a soldier. One of them is faithfulness. In the army of the Lord, you must be faithful, a faithful soldier. Tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. What are the words that we, will, we hope that we hear when we stand before God one day? We want to hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Good soldiers are found to be faithful. Oh, what an awful thing. That it must be to find a soldier in the army that is unfaithful. Imagine in the Marine Corps or, or the Army, Navy, Air Force, the National Guard, a, someone, a soldier who is unfaithful. I wonder what would happen to a soldier in the Marine Corps if they were found to be unfaithful and that they were that they were being friendly with the enemy. Wonder what would take place. Folks, uh, we must realize the Bible tells us in James 4 and 4, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever but therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy 
of God. This is the scripture. Also, it says in 1 John 2 and 15, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If you don't fight and stay close to God, you will become worldly in mind. And basically what that means is this. Your actions will be based on what the world thinks and what the world does. Your way of thinking will be affected and formed by what the world thinks. Your decisions will be based on what the world feels to be important. Let me tell you about this world system. The world system is designed by Satan himself to destroy you and your family. And oftentimes people who are not fighting the way that they ought to be fighting are the ones in the most turmoil saying, oh, help me, I'm in a terrible place. But then they're... They go AWOL for some length of time and then they come back and they find themselves in such a terrible place. Yes, the grace of God is wonderful. The grace of God will keep you. The grace of God allows us to return and be renewed and revived. But we bring much of our spiritual problems on ourselves when we fail to fight the good fight. Someone always needing revival. I remember as a young person I got saved every time a revival came along. Anybody else in that boat? There's a few of us here, right? But as we grow up in God, that's not the case. It shouldn't take camp meeting every year to give us a life support, you know, so to speak, that we live on. No, but God wants to do an establishing work in your life to help you move on in maturity in, in God and to live for him. You see, uh, we, 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 this are, there's a cause that we are fighting for because faithfulness is a commitment to a cause. My salvation and the salvation of my family, it is a cause worth fighting for, is it not? I commit, we, we, we commit ourselves to what we believe in. We commit ourselves to what we love. That's a choice that all of us have, you see. Revelation 12 and 11 says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. You and I, we are products of our will. We do what we want to do if those things are contrary to God then we must submit ourselves and allow our will to crumble Jesus said if any man come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me we surrender unto the Lord. This is a choice that you and I have to make. Uh, we, we commit ourselves unto him. Uh, the, the, the slogan, if you will, or, or the saying of the Marine Corps, we know it well around here, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. Marines are proud soldiers, aren't they? There's a couple of them here. They believe they're the greatest outfit in the whole world. They're, there we go. I thought I'd get something else out of somebody. About time. They are told to look right. They are told to shine their shoes. They're told to hold those shoulders back. Amen. But where, listen, I'm here to tell you, if you're a child of God, you are a part of the greatest army of all of the universe has ever seen, the army of God. And so I want to I wanna look like a Christian. I want to walk like a Christian. I want to talk like a Christian. I want to be faithful to the one who has rescued me from hell. Amen. 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 I want to be faithful, don't you? Secondly, you'll be required to be courageous. You will have to have courage. Courage is born out of conviction. There's a difference between being a coward and being afraid. Cowards don't have conviction in the cause. Cowards are held back because they don't believe in the cause. Fear holds the coward back because his fear is greater than his conviction in the cause. 
I imagine, I can't speak to the soldiers that were actually in battle. Uh, you may have to ask them after church. Uh, but I can imagine there were times when they were facing something on the battlefield that there was some fear that was there. But their conviction for the cause was greater than their fear. There's nothing wrong with having, facing some things that you may be afraid of. But bravery and courage is all about doing it anyway. Moving forward anyway for the glory of God. But fear will hold the coward back because a lack of conviction. But the courageous moves forward no matter what the danger is because he believes in the cause. You're going to have to be courageous to be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. And if there's not a cause to fight for, then what are we doing? When I think about salvation of mankind, when I think about my own spiritual health, when I think about the spiritual health of my family and my friends, is there not a cause to fight in the kingdom of God? Is there not a reason to dig down a little bit deeper and pray and seek the Lord on behalf of others? Is there not a cause, you see, that calls us to stand for what's right and to have this courage to stand against sin? It takes courage to stand up against a world that's gone crazy. Has the world gone crazy? Oh, my Lord. I feel like an old person when I start thinking uh, how bad, you know, because you hear that uh, none of you are old. I'm talking about people much older than all of you. Uh, but growing up, people... People used to say how it was back in my day. And I, found, I find myself saying that now. And, uh, and I'm only 48, right? And, uh, but man, it just seems like the world has absolutely went crazy. And it has because it's went farther and farther away from the word of God. Thirdly, to be a good soldier, you're going to have to be disciplined. This is a word that we don't like. We don't like Discipline. We don't want to have discipline in our lives. The, the man, the heart of men, the heart of women wants to do just whatever they want to do. But that's not a good soldier in Jesus Christ. We all have freedom to do whatever we want to do. The Lord does not make us do anything. But it is a place of commitment and it is a place of discipline. We are living in a time that's uh, a really an unbridled age that we're living in. Everyone, even many in the church, they're doing what's right in their own eyes. We're, we're living in a very selfish age. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Though I may not always want to obey, the love of Christ constrains me. His love that he has for me and the love that I have for him constrains me. Though, though I may not always, but he, 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 his love constrains me. What is discipline? They, they, they don't just put men and soldiers out there on the battlefield and give them a gun and say, all right, take care of business. Do they? No, there, there's some discipline that they have to go through. Discipline makes the difference. They have to go through training. They have to get the discipline they need for the battle. They have to go through boot camp. What are they told in boot camp? Fall in, fall out. Drop, give me 50. Uh-oh. Tuck in your shirt. Run, walk, hit the deck until they become soldiers. Before, before he is a soldier, he, he, he did what he wanted to do. Now he's a soldier. He's doing what he's told to do. The biggest reason many Christians never get anywhere with God because it takes them three days to decide what God said. I love it when I tell my kids something and they'll go, huh? And I'll go, I know you got better hearing than I got. What'd you say? Right? Every, everything that everyone says that oftentimes, God, it, what, huh? What? what uh, did not uh, everybody on the battlefield that had that kind of thing, when somebody said, hit the deck, when they stood around and said, huh? What'd you say? They didn't live to tell about it. 
God places discipline in our lives not for the times when everything is nice and easy. But God wants us to have discipline in our lives for when the time gets very, very difficult. We can still do what God has intended us to do. All of those times of training that the Lord puts us through uh, is getting us ready so that we can do things naturally when we get on the battlefield. That's why we, where do we get our discipline from? Not just in our personal life, but we go to Sunday school. We come to morning worship. We go to special prayer services and meetings and revivals and all of those types of things. And the word and the Holy Spirit is poured into us. And we're and so that when we get in the battle, we will act and it will be for our own protection. Some are dead spiritually because they said, huh? When God was saying, fall in. We need to be soldiers for Christ. Is there not a cause to fight for? Faithfulness, courageous, and disciplined. Well, those are some stout words maybe for some to hear and to grasp hold of this morning. But we're talking about being good soldiers, not for Good Shepherd Church of God, We're not good soldiers for Pastor Chancey. We're soldiers for Christ. The one who died for us. And there was no other way for us to be saved. And if you don't think it's a grand blessing that God chose you out of the rest of the billions that's on this planet to know him, You're missing and you're misunderstanding what God has truly done in your life. Stand with me if you would. I want to pray over you this morning. Mighty God, I love you, Lord. God, I thank you for your goodness and mercy in our lives today. I honor you, Lord. God, I'm thankful, Lord, the times I've missed the mark, your grace has kept me through the years. But I'm also, Lord, I'm thankful for what you've done in our lives. Through your blood, through the power of your spirit, through the discipline that you have placed and the chastening even that you have brought to us. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for choosing me. You didn't have to. Lord, I thank you for the first time that you ever dealt with my heart and conviction got a hold of me. You didn't have to do that. But I'm so glad you did. I'm thankful, Lord, for salvation. Lord, I'm thankful for deliverance. I'm thankful, God, for your holiness. Lord, when I think about what you have done in my life, I want to shout. I want to praise you. I want to do better. I want to check my spiritual appetite and see what are the things. What are the things that I'm hungering for? What are the things that I'm chasing in this life? I want to examine those things, God, and see if they are in line with your word. If they're not, Lord, help me. Change me. Change my mind. Change my heart. Because I want to love you. I want to serve you. I want to live, I want to pray, I want to worship, I want to do with the same mindset of our worship song, you are worthy of it all. For truly you and you alone, Lord, are worthy of all that I am, all that I have, and all that I do. For without you, we are nothing. We owe everything to you. Lord, I pray for anyone that's here today, they don't know you as personal Savior. 
Their name has not been written down but the book of life. Lord, I pray that they would get a hold of the gospel today and believe and repent. Believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. He was your substitute. He took the punishment that you and I deserve. Believe that. He has the power to forgive. Receive His mercy today. Receive His grace. Surrender your life to Him. Repent from all sin. Turn to Him and be saved today. Others that are standing, you've maybe you're as a good soldier, there's some things that are missing. Maybe I mentioned them today, maybe I didn't mention those. And your faithfulness, your courage, your discipline. Pastor, I want to be a good soldier. But maybe you need to make some adjustments in your life. You you maybe need to make a shift in your life to do what what God deserves. Hire something, not because of church membership, some minutes somewhere, some booklet telling you what you should do or what you shouldn't do, but because you're in love with the Lord. Maybe that needs to be rekindled. Maybe you left your first love. Maybe you're not loving the Lord like you one time did. And you found yourself drifted away, cold, indifferent, lukewarm. Dabbling in things that God delivered you from. Getting involved in things again. The Bible says a good soldier doesn't entangle himself with the affairs of this life. But God comes to set you free. Lord, help us now, we ask in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. These altars are open. Will you come? As many of you that will, whether you have a need or you don't, can we just move as a church? We're preparing our hearts for a time of renewal this week. If you do have a need from the Lord, won't you come? You can stand or you can kneel at the altar.